Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So if like me, you have a moderate addiction to coffee and you're interested in killing off senescent and zombie cells, then stay tuned because a couple of studies have just come out and there's a correlation between drinking coffee and autophagy, which is killing off uh, zombie and senescent cells. So enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and see what these new studies have got to offer. This is a review into a piece I read in lifeapps.io written by Zach Lawton. In it, he covers a study published in the Journal of Biochemical and Biophysical Research Communication that investigated how caffeine induces autophagy. Now, there are links in the description below to the study and other articles I used to put this presentation together. FYI, all the studies included in the review regarding coffee relate only to the consumption of black coffee without cream or milk, additives and or any kind of sweetener. Coffee is one of the most widely consumed beverages in the world. There are literally thousands of different types of brews, roasts and blends and everyone, including me, has their favourite. Good then that the humble bean can have such a profound effect on our longevity. That is provided you are also practicing some kind of fasting protocol. So coffee consumption may have specific effects on autophagy. Autophagy is a process of cellular recycling that is amplified during fasting. Decades of research suggests the potential health benefits of coffee consumption include protection against type 2 diabetes, Parkinson's disease, cardiovascular disease, liver disease, liver cancer, and it can improve heart health too. A comprehensive review published in the Annual Review of Nutrition focused on coffee and caffeine consumption and its various health outcomes. A meta-analysis of observational and randomized controlled trials suggests that there are many potential health benefits and obviously some risks, but overall there is a reduced risk of mortality associated with coffee consumption. Coffee consumption has been associated with the following health outcomes. And remember, this relates to black coffee, no cream, no milk, no sugar, and no artificial sweeteners. Please feel free to pause the video to read the list fully. But I think key in this list for those of us looking to keep the diseases of aging at bay are protection against type 2 diabetes, weight loss, improved cardiovascular health, and overall reduced mortality. However, drinking too much coffee can result in some unpleasant adverse side effects. These are usually related to the caffeine that is found in coffee. Like alcohol, caffeine sensitivity is a very personal thing. So issues with sleep may be down to the time of day that caffeine is consumed, the strength of the brew and the quantity of coffee you consume. A study published in the Journal of Biochemical and Biophysical Research Communication investigated the power of caffeine to induce autophagy in the skeletal muscle of rats. The researchers concluded that caffeine promoted AMPK-dependent autophagy through calcium-mediated pathways in skeletal muscle. This does not mean that high levels of caffeine are necessarily required for maximizing the effects of autophagy in your cells, but a little caffeine early in the day may boost that valuable autophagy induced period as you fast. Luckily for me, my first caffeine shot is about 30 minutes after I wake. I have mentioned autophagy a few times now, so what is it? Autophagy is a process of cellular recycling. Autophagy is the Greek for self-eating. So at the cellular level, your body becomes cannibalistic and eats the senescent or zombie cells that are weak and are no use to us anymore. Fasting induced autophagy has also been shown to dramatically increase the amount of autophagy that takes place in our liver, heart, muscle, and even our brain tissue. So let's quickly talk about the fasted state. According to Zach, when you fast for around 12 hours or more, you enter a metabolic state called ketosis. In this state, 
your body starts to burn down fat instead of glucose. Some of this fat is used by the liver to produce ketones. They serve as an alternative energy source for your brain cells and cells in other tissues when glucose isn't readily available. When the body is depleted of glucose or sugar, the insulin signaling pathway and mTOR pathway that are responsible for cellular growth are inhibited, or in other words, temporarily turned off. This inhibition of the mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR pathway signals to the body that the genes responsible for cellular growth can take a break, while the genes responsible for fat metabolism, stress resistance and damage repair should be turned on through the AMPK pathway. In a second study that was published in the journal Cell Cycle, researchers looked at the effects of both caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee on autophagy. They found that both the natural and decaffeinated brands resulted in rapid autophagy in mice one to four hours after coffee consumption. This increase in autophagy was observed in the liver, the heart and in muscle tissue. This has only been tested in mice, but there appears to be a chance of huge benefits weighed against very little risk, unless of course you do actually have a coffee allergy. This rapid onset of autophagy with the consumption of both caffeinated and the decaffeinated forms of coffee was accompanied with the inhibition of the mTOR pathway, meaning the genes responsible for fat metabolism, stress resistance and damage repair could be switched on. Coffee consumption was also associated with a broad deacetylation of cellular proteins. Deacetylation of key proteins is also known to turn on autophagy. Some specific antioxidant compounds found only in decaffeinated coffee can also deacetylate key proteins, which in turn initiates autophagy. So this research suggests that while caffeine can play its own significant role in autophagy, some compounds that are not removed during the decaffeination process may have an even stronger effect on autophagy activation. So if you are sensitive to caffeine, then decaf is definitely an effective option. And the researchers believe that these compounds may be polyphenols. So maybe a mix of caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee during a fast may bring even more benefit. Let me know what you think in the comments below and let me know if you do in fact make it a point to drink both caffeinated and decaffeinated coffee during your fasted state. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Uh, good news indeed for coffee drinkers like myself, but remember it does need to be black coffee, no milk, no sugar, no cream and no artificial sweetness. So lucky for me, I prefer brewed coffee or Americano. Also good, the decaf seems to be just as good and I tend to drink decaf after two or three in the afternoon and that's the brand of decaf that I use. Let me know in the comments below if you do combine um, fasting with drinking coffee and if you don't, it's quite easy to do. Just push back breakfast by two or three hours in the morning and if you think you're gonna feel hungry, then just cover that hunger by drinking coffee. Um, remember that caffeine now induces autophagy Autophagy destroys senescent or zombie cells. And as we know, the more zombie or senescent cells we've got, the shorter our lifespan. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.